Alberta was built by free enterprise, by pioneers who came here and were given nothing more than an opportunity to farm the land. They were immigrants from around the world and they were advertised Western Canada as God's country. That's a reminder, I think, that a lot of politicians in Ottawa need right now especially. What the government is trying to do is create a government-controlled economy where decisions are made by politicians and bureaucrats rather than by customers, workers, and business owners. That is a big problem because in a free market economy, you get ahead by having the best product. In a government-controlled economy, you get ahead by having the best lobbyist. Uh, in a free market economy, you're judged on your merits. In a government economy, you're judged by your influence. Uh, and of course, in a government-run economy, those who have money are able to use that money to translate it into power, and that power back into more money. But in a free market economy, anybody who's prepared to add more value to other people uh, can get ahead. It is a system based on voluntary exchange rather than mandatory taxation. And it is a system that has led Alberta to traditionally be among the greatest economic powerhouses in the entire country. Today I'm going to talk to you about a massive tax grab that is designed to transfer about three billion dollars out of the productive private sector into the hands of government bureaucrats and politicians. The government is planning to fundamentally transform how small private businesses are taxed. It is the biggest reform of our tax system in about 40 years. It was announced on July 18th, 2017. They seem to be rushing ahead with this fundamental transformation that could have as serious consequences as fewer family doctors in our communities, fewer small businesses to employ our new Canadians and our young people, and a more difficult time for entrepreneurs to save for their retirements, their maternity leave, and their sick leave. The way corporate or small business income is taxed in this country is ultimately the same way wage income is taxed. And the idea is that you should pay the same tax on your business profits as you would on a wage to neutralize the system. The government claims that you have a special advantage though right now and as a result they are bringing in massive new taxes on any income you earn on that money by investing in passive instruments like uh, renting out real estate including farmland, um, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, GICs or anything else. So if you have cash in your business and you invest it in something that is not part of your active business operation, they want to double tax you on the proceeds of those investments. So this is a, an effective tax rate of 73%. I am the view that when taxation reaches 73%, it enters the realm of theft because the government takes 73 cents of the dollar that you earned through your responsible decision to invest and save. They're only proposing to do that for private businesses, not for publicly traded companies. So the big guys on Bay Street who trade on the stock market will stay with this, this admittedly already high tax rate, but they will not be affected by the double taxation that the government is putting in place, which is very interesting. They say they're going after the wealthy, but they only want to go after a certain type of a person, right? They're not going after the Bombardier executive that's getting a $400 million bailout and using it to raise their pay by 50% in one year the same time they lay off 14,000 people. They're not going after the wealthy bondholders who profit off of lending to the government when it runs a big deficit. You know, there are a lot of uh, people who are getting really rich off of this government by taking, but they seem to want to go after the people who are making. The effect of the uh, legislative changes that the uh, government is proposing in this regard, though, is far more broad-reaching what it will effectively do is ban people from claiming as a capital gain the sale of a company or a farm to a family member. So instead, you would have to claim it as a dividend. Now, dividends are taxed at almost twice the rate as capital gains. And so the, the tax cost of selling your farm business uh, or your small business to your family will effectively double 
if this legislation passes into law as is currently proposed. There will be a massive tax advantage in selling your business or farm to a stranger over selling your business or farm to your children. Because when you sell to a stranger, you will still be able to claim it as a capital gain. You will pay no tax on that sale, up to $835,000 for a business and $1 million for a farm. All of you know that international investors are chomping at the bit to buy world-famous Canadian farmland because it's a great investment. It gives them passive income. They rent it out and they get, a, they get a rent check and they're in great shape. They're bidding for our farmland and they are going to have a 45% advantage over the next generation of Canadian farmers in buying that land. As a result, over the course of the next 20 years, if this proposal is in fact implemented, our farm youth will be transformed into tenants on their ancestral lands who pay rent to corporate landlords. Justin Trudeau said that his, quote, family fortune will not be affected by these changes. And so what I think is happening here is Trudeau is trying to unlock an avalanche of short-term revenues that he can spend today, even though he knows that will leave governments down the road after he is retired in a worse financial position, which is perfectly consistent with his borrowing strategy. You know, he's got these deficits that are 80% bigger than he promised. He's spending tomorrow's money today. To have tax experts across Canada agree that these changes could wipe out the family farm, that is unbelievable. The family farm is, is such a foundation to what, what our heritage and who we are as Canadians. And those family farms and ranches, uh, those are the lifeblood and the foundation of our small rural communities. And it trickles down from the family farm into the communities as towns, villages, and we, we cannot lose such a key part uh, of our Canadian economy. Small businesses obviously can reconsidering their career choices. What advice do you have for them today? Do they just have to you know, sit this one out? Or do you want them to continue building businesses in the hope that it's going to change? Keep building your business, but even more urgently, get involved and fight back. You know, there are, every interest group around uh, Parliament Hill is showing up and demanding more and more of other people's money. If small business people don't pull back in the other direction, then they're, they're going to continue to be trampled on by this government. So stand and fight. Join with us. We can't do it alone. We need our entrepreneurs to stand and raise their voice now more than ever to overturn these destructive uh, economic policies. Traditionally, chambers of commerce and, and those types of uh, business groups don't get very political. We need them to get political. We need them to start talking about how this is going to hurt their, their businesses and their towns. We're asking business owners to get proactive. Get out there. Start talking to your, your employees, your, your friends, your neighbours. Tell them what's actually going to happen. Well, we got to stand up and fight. It's time for a tax revolt.